Hey guys, welcome back to the Passive Money Plan. I'm Alex, that's Curvy. Today, we're going to be talking about this topic right here. Warren Buffett talks about value investing and that opportunities arise because people do dumb things. And I know- uh, For me, I know you probably had something to say, but this is perfect right up my alley. <laughs> this, is, this is it. This is, um, this is absolutely true. This is absolutely true. People will do dumb things, no matter for stocks, real estate, business. So I'm going to give you a couple instances. In real estate, the reason why investors who bought a lot of real estate in the Florida market, in the Florida market or anything like that, from 2010 all the way to like 2018, the only reason why they got those great value prices was because people made stupid, they did dumb things back in 2000. 6, 2007, 2008. The reason why people could grab stocks like Altria, Amazon at the low, American Express at the low was because banks did stupid things. Banks and people in the economy, the Federal Reserve did stupid things in 2008. Same thing, uh, dot com, same thing, flash crash, same thing um, during COVID. You always say value investing is buying something to hold it for the long term, but soon something crazy happens. Everybody forgets that that adage is you hold it for the long term. They will sell it at depressed prices. They will, you know, over leverage themselves and they can't afford the leverage that they have on the assets that they bought. They will do crazy terms like arm loans when it comes to real estate businesses. They don't know how to run the financials in the business. And I have, I can give you like personal life instances, how I took advantage of people doing dumb things. And that's how I became good at value investing. Cause I always say buy when there's blood in the streets, cause blood gets in the streets because people are doing dumb things. But Alex, what you got? This is a trade and skill I have learned from you. And I have learned it from you because most people believe that it's something that is not moral or correct but the reality is if you don't take advantage someone else will and if you are on a path to truthfully create wealth for you and your family you cannot go into taking advantage of opportunities or go into investing concerned about people doing dumb things, as you said, you know, you're concerned about your path that you're on and opportunities that arise, you have to take advantage of them. It will accelerate your growth in investing. You could do it the slow way and just plug away at, you know, index funds and stuff like that. Or you could constantly be looking for opportunities and deals and taking advantage of them, preparing yourself beforehand and then you know, pulling the trigger once you see them. I've seen plenty of people not want to take advantage of opportunities because, oh, they feel bad for the person's situation. They got themselves in that situation. Why is that your fault? Why is that your problem? And, you know, I'm the one that comes up next to take it. So that's just the way I see Yeah. And then just going through, just going through the my mental role that Rolodex on advantage that I've taken, taken advantage of. So my first rental property that I ever bought, the ten and I bought it with the tenant in there. The tenant was paying nine seventy five. The owner or the seller, they were so worried about the market won't recover. Now the markets, so two thousand from two thousand all the way up to two thousand eight, the market has been going up. The market goes down temporarily. They scared that the market won't recover. They paid. $175,000 for the property. They had a tenant in there, paying $975 a month. I bought that property from that person for $52,000. I still have the same tenant in there today. The rents are substantially higher. That property now is worth two hundred and some thousand dollars My second property, same area, same location, same deal. This tenant was paying $1,100 a month. The seller paid $176,000 for it, inpatient, panic, and they sold me that property for 70, I mean not 70, $54,000. 
Same tenant in there, tenant substantially higher. That unit is going that unit's worth about 225 now. And it just people will do dumb things. And then I mean we can go to the you know strip mall in Texas. Same thing. Person didn't know how uh didn't have his debt structure right and didn't have any capital left after his debt structure, how he set up the debt structure for the mall, he didn't have uh any capital to fix it up to you know do the repairs of what commercial owners supposed to do the outside of the building i went and got that property from him for pennies on a dollar because he he was stuck anyway he couldn't do nothing with it the only thing he had was business owners complaining to him i got it for pennies on a dollar rehabbed it and then now that property is worth six or seven x what i paid for it and that's just how i go about it i look for people that's going to do dumb things or people that do dumb things and like I always say, I'm not here, I'm not here attacking mom and pop. You know, what I mean by mom and pop, I mean I'm not going and seeing people struggling to pay their mortgage on their house that they're living in and trying to find a way to sucker them out of a deal. But if the person that I'm buying from is an investor, it's fair game. Because we are in the same game. You're out here trying to make money, I'm out here trying to make money, and I'm going for you. And I'm going for the juggler every time. And that's the name of the game. And I'm not sitting here trying to, I'm not going, you know, super low balling like, hey, you got it for $100,000, i will give you a dollar. But I'm going for, I'm going for fair market, whatever value you placed at it, I want it at a, a cheaper price than that. And that's what I go for it every time. But people do dumb things. I'm always, I'm guaranteed people will do dumb things in the financial world and it will always provide me opportunities. Like now coming up, a lot of these people bought all these rental properties in the last two years. They paid over asking price. They paid over market value for them. The, the rents that they have to charge to even you know pay the mortgage is higher than the market rate that the area is in. Eventually that dam will break, meaning it won't be tenants that, that's going to pay the rent. They're not going to be able to afford the mortgage. So they only going to have two options. They either gonna have to sell their souls and and use all the money from their nine to five jobs to keep paying that mortgage, or they're gonna have to sell it at a at a rate that I mean at a price that's that they can offload it so they can uh, get that headache off their hands. I want to be the guy that's saving a life, like oh oh yeah, I'll take this off your hands, but at a way less price than that, and then I can reset the market and say okay, now we're renting at this price and get tenants in there, but that's. That's the opportunity because people will do, do dumb things when it comes to the finance and money and, and the value investing space that you can always have opportunities if you just look for them because they're they are there all the time. Yeah, and I'll say like just with the two properties that I've bought, they you know, both sellers were in a they had a reason to sell, you know, that you know they were in a certain situation. The first, you know, they were going through a divorce. And they were renting the property as well, but then it became vacant. And then I'm sure them going through a divorce on top of that, you know, just pushed them to, you know, come down on the price that I wanted. And then the property up in Georgia, the guy at closing, which was weird because Georgia, you actually meet the seller. But um, the guy uh, that was selling the property, he mentioned that he was ready to retire if you have the property structured right, why are you selling it to retire? You know, why not just leave it and collect your money? But, you know, he wasn't doing th things correctly, never raised rents. And, you know, now I, you know, got it at a lower price than he was asking and then raised the rents. So for people that's watching and you want to get into any kind of value investing, no matter if it's stocks, no matter if it's bonds, and before, I mean, no matter if it's bonds, stocks, real estate business it's always opportunities you just got to go out there and do the work for it um on the stock market the one that that you see in right now is you see in big equity firms rating regional banks they rate it they short sell the regional banks to just press the price and then of course people bailing out left and right getting out of regional banks all of the regional banks are not going to fail if you do the homework and find out what's a good regional bank they got a good balance sheet and then when they depress in the price, you go there and collect a lot of shares now, five, 10 years from now, you're sitting there at three, four, five X multiple of the price that you're getting. 
And you're seeing that right now in the banking space that they're shorting, they shorten banking stock because they want banks to collapse to put the Fed on, put more pressure on the Fed to either stop raising interest rates or have the FDIC come in and step in. But all the banks are not going to fail. So if you do your homework, you can go in there and actually get a company at a very attractive price because people are doing dumb things like selling great companies because a small event in time like this, short sellers rating stocks, that it will give you the opportunity to take advantage of a long-term game. And you're sitting here just like me and Alex talking about great opportunities we receive from people doing dumb things. Absolutely. And like you said, it's not just stocks and real estate. It's, you know, anything. Um, you have that one famous story of uh, the guy that sold you the iPod for like, what was it? Mm -hmm. like, what was it, 100 bucks or... Was it was 100 bucks with accessories. That's what iPods was going for like 400 yeah, bucks. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, and it could be in anything. Um, it could be, you know, things as, as small and minute as that. If there's something that you want. And that's another thing that, you know, we always talk about people to telling you guys to spend less than you make. Look for opportunities. Look for, you know, if, if there's something that you want, look for a way to pay less on it. You know, it's OK to go garage sale shopping and stuff like that. There's nothing dingy or gross about it or, you know, it's just you looking for a better deal than, you know, what other people are looking for. There's always going to be someone that and, wants to let go of something. And in that instance, I mean, you find crazy things like Alex, you found the couple who just bought a bedroom set and then three months later, they just sell, sold it. Right. You know, me, I find the entertainment, I find the uh, entertainment set and it was huge. And then I looked it up. I looked it up at uh, one of the local stores where I knew that they bought it from because I saw the sticker still on the back of the entertainment center. It was going for twenty five hundred bucks. I paid one hundred and seventy five dollars for it. Right. Those opportunities are out there. Right. I mean, why would I? So I would be a fool to be like, oh, I'm just going to go in the furniture store and go buy that one. So I can say, oh, I paid tw uh, twenty five hundred bucks when I can get the exact same one for one hundred and seventy five dollars. Yeah, there's people that literally, and I've said this before on the channel, is people literally list stuff for free. I mean, you can go on, and Gary V talks about this. You can go on Facebook Marketplace and people are just listing stuff for free. Just pick it up, you know, and regardless of the person's situation, all you should be thinking about is what your goals are, what your objective is. That's it. You shouldn't be, when you start to get your emotions involved and in caring for other people's situations and stuff you're going to limit yourself as to how many opportunities you can take advantage of and it's not to sound you know heartless or nothing but it's just the reality of it people are always going to have situations there's people with worse situations in other parts of the world just focus on you and focus on your family and that's it that's it thanks for tuning into the channel like subscribe Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. We still need subscribers. So we always need subscribers, but we still need we need a lot more. So like and subscribe and we'll see you in the next video. See you guys.